My name is Toyin Oshino. If I had to quickly leave a room or leave a party and then a friend would ask, ah, why did you leave? And then you then start saying, yeah, I have sickle cell. And then you go into the whole conversation, this is my situation and then the looks of pity and all that nonsense. But I think the first time I was openly Proud is not the word, but I'm not ashamed of being a sickler. I think that was when I started my blog. Um, because I'd gotten tired of having individual conversations with everyone. If anyone asked me when it came to work, I'd just be like, look, I have this condition. You're going to have to take me as I am. Whoo, the worst one. So my worst one was not so much the crisis itself, but the situation. So um, I was at the University of Warwick and I decided that I wanted to see the world. So I decided to carry myself and go to the University of Madison, Wisconsin, where there are virtually no black people and um, it's very cold. So it was, I think it was November. It was really, really cold. Um, and then I had a chest crisis, and it's the first time I ever had a chest crisis. So um, I was rushed to the hospital, and I lost three days. I do not know what happened to me in those three days. I woke up um, in the ICU with blood transfusions, and I had MRIs and CAT scans, and people messing about with my hip and stuff. and. I did, or I had all of this happen to me on my own. My family were in Nigeria and the UK. Nobody could pretty much help me. So I basically at that point realized that, oh, more, for all intents and purposes, you are on your own. Um, so that was difficult. That was difficult. But it was my most triumphant because I had the option of dropping out of uni at that point. Um, my professor was basically like, whatever you want to do, we will, no one's going to judge you. And um, I went back to the UK to recoup and then went back and finished summer school and at least got my passing grade so I could go back to the UK to finish my degree. So yeah, that was the worst, but also the best. So there's different pain for different types which actually complicates the answer even further. So you have what kind of feels like the muscular one that you can pretty much deal with. You get those in your arms and your legs. Um, those ones I prefer because they can go on for like probably a week at the most, but they are manageable. You strap yourself up, you get up and go. Um, then they're the ones that really, really it's kind of like you've got ants in your bones and they're biting you from the inside and they're crawling up all in there and there's millions and millions of them like crawling and crawling and gouging out your bones. Those ones are the ones that can take like the whole of your back. For me, like my hip and my lower back, once I get those, it's done. Now, that's with the pain, but then the different crises, I have different words for them. So there's the creeper. Um, the creeper, basically, you're totally fine. You're going about your day. You feel a little tired, but you can, you can deal with it, you know? And then it creeps up and it creeps up and it kind of crescendos. And then it gets into the whole, okay, I'm screaming and I can't walk and I can't move and I need help. So you have the creepers. Then you kind of have the slam dunks that kind of hit you out of nowhere. You're sat down, maybe um, you kind of slouch in a very awkward position and at the time you're not thinking about it but you've cut off circulation to some body part and then you stand up, <laughs> hits you. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't take any painkillers. You can't like try with the oxygen. You can't try with anything. It hits you and you're done. And then you have the mundane ones where it's like, okay, I woke up this morning, my back hurts. I'll deal with it. At some point I'll probably forget. And then it will remind me in the evening, but it's fine.
So those are the bit. It's 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 a comp pain is complicated. You can't put one you can't put one label on it and then say, you know, yeah, everyone deals with it the same way. So it's it's a very complicated question. So when I was in America, um, health insurance, I don't know how people in America deal with it. It's 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 a mind fuck because um when I had my episode and such the like, I was then confronted with the hospital bills because my university hadn't sorted out my health insurance. And I got for a seven day stay, I got a bill of, what was it, $36,000? And they kept on coming at me that I needed to pay this bill. And I, I was like, there's no way I have insurance. What are you trying to tell me? I, I can't pay this bill. And that is just being in the abroad. Now, in Nigeria, I, I always tell people that I'm a spoiled sickler because I have a father who um, is a managing partner in his hospital. And I have a mother who's a nurse. Nine times out of 10, my parents treat me at home. But I do remember seeing a bill um, of like a three day stay at my dad's hospital. And it amounted to 300,000 Naira. And that was just two, three days. So it's expensive being me. I don't even have a Gucci bag to show for it, but it's expensive. Relationships have been difficult. I think I myself am not necessarily the easiest person to get along with. And then you complicate it with sickle. My last relationship ended um, it was a bit of an emotionally abusive one, to be honest. Um, it ended with my ex basically telling me that the reason why he didn't see a future between the two of us was because of the sickle. Um, throughout the relationship, he would tell me how to deal with my condition. Um, when you're in a crisis, and I'm sure a lot of sicklers can relate, the first thing you're trying to do is trying to control the situation. You need to be in that bubble. Because here's the thing, if you leave it to other people, they freak out. You're the only person who knows what's going on. So when you're screaming and shouting, you're still calculating, I need to do this and do that. But other parties are just seeing you screaming, they freak out, they can't control the situation. So, um, Sicklers tend to try and control. When you then have a partner who has his own control issues, then trying to control you while you're trying to get control, it doesn't really pan out well. I mean, we broke up, which was fine. And um, in my mind, maybe because it also kind of fucks with your self-esteem, so in my mind, I was then thinking that it was my fault, you know, I am what I am, so this is what has happened. For you to get with me, you are going to experience the worst because at that point, you can then make a decision. Um, a lot of people always kind of assume that they know how to handle things. And no matter how much you tell them, guy, you know what? I've been dealing with this for 37 years. You're just walking in listen to me first then if you think that the way I'm handling it is not the best let us get to that place where I can let you in but if you're gonna come at me and tell me the way I'm handling this is not right yeah I don't need you I can manage on my own so I went through a phase where I would have a crisis or I would be having a crisis and I'd be in a room full of people and nobody would know and I would just disappear and I would go and sort myself out. And my mother used to get really frustrated with me because I would never tell her when I was in a crisis. There was once from Nigeria, she found out which hospital I was in the UK and called me at my hospital bed and said, Toyin, you need to start talking to me. I would basically go off in my own little bubble and deal with the situation and I'd come back out when everything was fine. You do you do have those negative thoughts. I'm a burden. Because I can't work out, I'm fat. Nobody is going to want me. 
my parents are tired of me. It happens. You do, because again, pain makes, can get you into a state where you are very easily depressed. And so all of those negative thoughts, it's a spiral that just goes down and down. But at the same time, you know, my parents love me and they wouldn't trade me for anything. And I've been able to achieve so many things. I've had fun. I went to America, fair enough, I had a crisis there, but you know, I went to America, I made friends, I had fun, I had a boyfriend. I like, you know, went to Disney World. I went to Six Flags. I like, I need to travel more though. But I've done things and I've had fun doing those things. So you will get into that frame of mind from time to time, but then the good things need to come in. Ah, take it easy. I absolutely hate that. I absolutely hate it with passion. And that's because I, I love my mom. I really, really do. But um, if I listened to my mom all the time, I wouldn't have achieved anything in my life. I would have just stayed in a room Close the door, not done anything. Take it easy. Ah, but you look really good though. Ah, are you sure? I'm like, really? Am I sure? Really? Is that a question? Ah, I hate it when people do that. Or it's like, ah, so when are you going to get married? Okay, is that a prerequisite? Like, am I supposed to be somebody who is looking for a partnership? because I have this thing. Or the one that gets me, how are you going to get pregnant? Nigga, the same way everybody else does. What? Okay, fine, my path is a little different. But you know what, there are a whole load of other people in this world that have different paths. You just don't know them because there isn't that label, there's not that thing that is like, okay, this might be a different path from everyone else. So, but it's the take it easy thing that really annoys me. Again, I've been through situations where there was a guy I was dating and I decided to have the, the woman's conversation where it's like, where is this thing going? <laughs> and the guy then basically says, his mom C said that, ah, you can't marry someone like me. I said, do really packed off my stuff that day. And that was the end of that relationship. When it comes to disabilities and Let's, let's, let's get it straight. A lot of people would like to, on the basis of not trying to have negative thoughts, then say that this is not a disability, that this is just a situation. This is a disability. I can't do what somebody who works at a bank does. Wake up um, at six o'clock in the morning, gets to work at eight, work till 8 p.m. at night and then spend another two to three hours trying to get home. I can't do that. I can't. So particularly when I worked at a bank, it was very apparent to me that um, there was, they didn't take care. They didn't look at the situation as a disability. They just thought she's just moaning and complaining. There was an incident where I was working um, on a project and I stayed in the office for 24 hours. And I, so I got in at eight in the morning and I ended up leaving eight in the morning the next day. And I basically sent my manager a text message and said to him, I have been here since so-and-so time. I need to go home. I will not be able to come in today but I will be in the office the next day. I wake up at one o'clock in the afternoon to find a text message from him basically saying, um, you do not have the right to tell me when you are coming into the office. I appreciate the work that you've done, but you need to be in the office for two o'clock today. I sent him a message and I said, you have a choice. You, you have a choice of me taking one day to sleep it off or seven days of me being in a crisis and then coming back and looking at you. So the guy kind of calmed down. But um, even finding jobs, 
there was once another bank, I had an interview with them and I was up front with them and I told them this is the situation, I cannot do early mornings and late nights. So is there a way that before I come in, we can agree, you know, a scenario? And up until that point, I had gone through every single interview stage. And then after that conversation, silence, nothing from them. There is no protection for disabled individuals in this country with regards to employment, which is really, really sad. The easiest thing for me is to basically go it on my own or find a company that is sympathetic to my needs. But this, this country's hard. My biggest fear is this stops me from achieving all I can achieve. I wanna have babies. I wanna live in a mansion. I want to travel. The travel thing is, is it's really hard finding travel insurance for somebody who has a pre-existing condition. So I find traveling slightly restrictive. I want to be able to do those things. I want to have a large family. I want to be happy. Sometimes I feel that it can stop it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a fear because I've kind of resigned myself to the fact that it probably will kill me. Now, how? That is the interesting soap opera, which will make life interesting. But um, I know that there is a high probability that it will be the reason why I die. And my main fear is it taking me too soon. I, I would like to, you know, when I'm 80 and the children are with their own, and you know, I have grandkids that are annoying me and I don't want them to come anywhere near me because, you know, they're tiny and they're annoying. I want that. I don't want it to take me too soon. But at the same time, I need to live my life. I can't be bound by it, so. There are too many people who try to dictate what you do. There's nothing more frustrating than I'm enjoying a glass of wine. And trust me, before I've had that glass of wine, I have calculated, I must drink saute amount of water, and I can, this glass of wine needs to last me for an hour so that I don't get too hydrated too quickly. So I've done these calculated. There's nothing more frustrating than a friend who's trying to be protective than going, Omo, you can't have that glass of wine. It's like you're overbearing. And it's, it's, yeah, it's not fun. Listen, don't try and force your agenda in making me stay healthy. I'm already on that path. I'm already trying to do that. Um, if I have a crisis, listen, don't look too serious. Joke with me because one of my defense mechanisms I know is I try to make people laugh. Um, but I think the key one is listen. Just, just listen.